Hey, how's it going guys? Bob from Bobots Trains and haven't been doing a lot with the trains lately, but I'm into some other projects. So what's the project for today? Well, it's something not sure I really wanted to get into here, but you know, it's one of those deals where you, you take one step and then you take another step and before you know it, you're, you're committed. Uh, laptop computer that someone gave to me was a HP 17 inch computer and had a couple problems with it so they bought a new one and they said they don't know what to do with this so it's from 2010 but it's a nice 17 inch computer anyway the problem with it was um, as you can see back here this is the base of the computer as you can see back here where you know the fan and the heat sink for the motherboard was and all that good stuff this whole section was gone and that's because the hinge um, where the panel flat panel monitor went in got real tight and it ended up breaking out this hinge section and this grill for the fan so the whole back of this case is gone it's a, it's a well-known issue for this model HP um, as seen by the fact that when I went online to look for a replacement um, you would think the whole you could buy the whole computer maybe for 100 bucks or 150 bucks but <laughs> all I needed was well all I really needed was the two sections because look the screw parts gone up here and then if you go to this one see there's all this parts here and the screw mount is here all this parts here so that's what I needed and I ended up paying like a hundred bucks for this I had to wait for a while to find one that was in decent shape now also you know where the uh, you know the keyboards normally in here this is the front panel where this goes together we had the same issue the screw I don't know if you can see it here but this screw is all broken out here okay and the rest of it was in pretty good shape but that's part of the plastic and I didn't want to screw with it so you know I got a replacement one of these and now look what they've done they have like a metal bracket on here so somebody knew something was screwed up anyway old stuff over here new stuff here had to take the entire computer apart to get this far you know it's a five-year-old battery so I got a replacement battery under here and uh, wanted to up the memory so I got 8 gig of RAM and the, the cooling fan well first of all these fins which were in here which were they were kind of all bent up and I tried my best to fix them and the fans kind of gunky so I got another heat, heat sink and heat pipes and a fan so we're going to try that um, just so you can see if I can get over here here's the panel with you know these hinges which I'm trying to loosen up so it doesn't do it again uh, hold on the wires stuck for the camera here's all the screws and I tried to mark them as they came out so I can see how to put them back uh, what do we got here's a keyboard a DVD drive back panel yeah, there's more stuff somewhere around here anyway it's going to be fun let's give it a shot and see what happens Okay, so I'm pretty certain what the problem is here. It's hard to see, I, I know, because of the reflection. But these, uh, I can't see my monitor here. These, these were the hinges hook in, see? And there's, these are like little washer spring loaded, and there's a nut on here, and you can just loosen and tighten that. And that's how much pressure this is for the screen um, to close. And I think, I mean, I really loosened them up, but I think they get tight over time and they put too much pressure on those brackets, which are down in the case, and then they end up breaking out the case. So they're supposed to have these little caps on them, and I really think I got to put these caps back on before I put the computer together. I wish I didn't have to because then I could adjust them, but I think I'm going to have to put them on now. So that's what's going on first. So I'm going to take some alcohol and clean these all up, and then I'll put down a new bead of thermal paste and we'll see see if we can get that fixed up now I'm going to put a little thermal paste on here uh, CPU thermal paste I don't know I've had it for a while I hope it's still okay um, some people say just put a tiny little bit right in the center 
and then smash it on and let it ooze out like the sides of a pea. It seemed like they had it seemed like they had pretty much on there. That looks like way too much. You get too much. And then it there's like a fine line between wicking the heat away and having it make good contact with the uh, processor and the heat sink. I'm making quite a mess here. Really, this should just mate onto here and this needs to plug down into here. Okay, there's three screws here that need to line up. CPU generates heat, the copper heat pipe pulls it down here, the fan blows it over the heat sink and uh, hopefully out the side of the case. The DC power comes in over here, and this is what powers the motherboard. So we need to plug this little guy in here somewhere before we get too far because you have to lift it up to do that. Okay, good. Okay, now there's two speakers down here. Uh, this one. The wire routes up to here, to this speaker, and then both of them come into here. Well, and this is a subwoofer up here. <laughs> subwoofer, it's this big. Um, he plugs into here. Picture also seems to show him with this orientation with the red wire coming down this way. Okay, I plugged uh, some USB connectors into here and wiggled them around to make sure that these weren't blown out or anything. They seem pretty tight. We'll give it a shot. We'll let it go. I know the lighting's bad here on this for you guys. I'm trying to... This thing has a little tab, a little black tab you pop up. And you got to try to slide this dang thing into there. Okay, now I don't know what kind of fun we're going to get into because... Supposedly, I can put these screws in holding this panel in. These screws were inside these uh, brass grommets from the old system, which had pulled free of the plastic. So, boy, it's no wonder that thing breaks out, you know. And that's going to be real, that's going to be really, really loose for a laptop screen gonna fall right back so before I go any further I'm gonna take them back out and I'm gonna pop these plastic things off and I'm gonna start tightening it up because I think this is our only opportunity that took uh, longer to screw around with than anticipated I think I got it now to the point where depending on the angle I put it like if I go any looser than it is now it'll just, the screen will just fall back. But any tighter, and I think it's it's blatantly obvious why this thing broke in the first place, it's a design issue. They got this one screw here, one screw here, holding this metal plate down to this little brass insert into plastic. And when I go like this, I mean, you can't see it too much, but look over, look over here. And it's actually flexing the plastic here because of the pressure that this little screw is putting on there. So what I did, I, you know, it may break again. I don't know. I don't know what choice we have. There's more tension on this one because this one has more surface area and it's bigger and it didn't break. This is the corner that broke out the first time. So he's got less tension on him. He's got a little more. And, it, you know, you want to be able to put it back at an angle so you can sit here and play with the thing and read it. There's So there's not much else I can do with it.
Uh, also, when the case is put back on the top, I guess it gives it a little plastic structure over here to help, but can't be significant. But anyway, that was kind of a pain, and it's now become clear to me why it breaks in the first place, and it's just stupid, you know? They need, well, I mean, the metal is not going to do it. They need maybe another anchor in each of these you know, down into the plastic or, or and, and beef this support up over here in the corner so that it's not putting all this pressure on that little corner plastic. But you have to be careful with it when I'm using it. The VGA cable plugs in here. Okay, this is curious um, as well. I see where it looks like it should go, but I have this bad feeling that these should go underneath this red wire that I already put in here. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them in here. The easy thing to do, I guess, is pull out that subwoofer wire. Actually, they need to go underneath. They need to go down and through a hole underneath the motherboard into the bottom of the computer and there for the uh, Wi-Fi. So I should be able to close this and flip him over. This one has a two on it and there's a tiny little two marked there. Okay, so a um, couple points of interest here. This is the this is the palm rest that's gonna go on top here. The replacement one I got and I need to clean it up a little bit, but I think it'll be easier to clean once it's installed, really. The guy didn't give me the little screws. Uh, he sent a uh, power he sent a power switch, but he didn't give me little screws to put it in. Luckily, I had the old ones. And there's also, so there's a cable for the power switch. There's a cable that comes up from the fingerprint reader. And there's one here from the palm rest, which he did not provide. Luckily, I had this cable from the old one. There's a little piece of tape here. Hopefully, it'll stick down. Okay. So, uh, this, <laughs> this new one has... A piece of metal here which when we invert it and install it it's going to go right back on top of this part that broke before so maybe that's part of their part of their deal to help hold that down and give it a little more strength i don't know but before i go snapping this in because i think it's just all a bunch of clips around here I'm going to double check all my work. Of course, this connects to here, this connects to here, and this connects to here once it's snapped down, but I don't want to smash anything in there. So I'm going to go offline here, check everything, make sure I don't have any spare parts laying around before I snap this in. I noticed while I was putting the palm rest, squeezing it back together, I flipped it over and the battery had fallen out here. And I thought, oh, okay, cool, I'll replace it with another one. Um, so I went up and got one. I had one in the back. A battery. Yeah, battery. Why do people say battery? I mean, it's clearly it's battery. I don't know. I guess they have power in their battery because they have bats in their belfry. I don't know. But anyway, off subject. Oh, I had one in the back, a 2032. Remember in the 70s and 80s, you'd, you'd save up all your money and you'd go to buy a, uh, a wood panel um, receiver, Kenwood receiver, or a stereo component or something, a silver one, you know, and you'd go to Radio Shack or you'd go to like a place like Stereo Post or we had a local place, Stereo Discounters, and you'd have all your money ready and you'd get the one you want and the guy would be like, oh, let me see if I have one in the back. Everything's in the back, you know, nothing was out on the shelf like the big box stores. They had to go check and see if it was in the back. Anyway, so I had one of these in the back. You know, I've sub-referenced three times and I'm off topic. But anyway, this plastic here was broken. Somebody had jammed something in there. And just The plastic was just holding enough until they got it to me and it was broke. So hit it with a little red, Loctite red, and hit it with some Jet Set. And I think it will last. Look, that battery is going to last now longer than I'm going to have this computer, right? We hope. Where we are are these stupid little things. This, uh, you gotta lift these carefully and then you gotta feed these in here. Uh, one of these, what did I say they were? This one comes from the power switch. There might even be a reader under here or something, card reader. Uh, there's a fingerprint one, which is this, I believe. And this one comes from the touchpad. And they are unpleasant at best 
to get in without breaking the little clip. So I'm going to take my time, get them in here. Actually, that one went in pretty good. And uh, so I'm going to put those in and then I'll be back. I have two screws here that are marked palm, breast, under keyboard. And these are marked with a little arrow. So he can go. I'll tell you what, that cleaned up a lot better than I thought it would. It, it looks damn near brand new. Um, I bought this stuff a long time ago, this kind of tech spray. Been using it to clean my computers, zero charge tech spray. It does a really good job with a microfiber cloth. Um, other than, no, this thing looks almost brand new. So, yeah, I got these back in, cleaned that up. All the seams look correct, as far as I can tell. So now there are literally 21 or 22 screws that need to be put in all these, you know, here, here, here. So I'm going to put all those in and then I'll be back. Oh, it's not an advertisement for Hershey Hotel. I used to play in a band at the Hershey Hotel and this is one of their room keys. Um, I was using it to, to get this thing apart. <laughs> Why put all the screws back in before I've tested to make sure this thing even works? Well, you guys know I like to do my videos off the cuff, live. And second of all, I have faith in my work. So it's going to work. Think positive. We're not going to have to rip anything apart. And for that matter, then let's just put in the RAM because why not go ahead and Ruin 8 gig of RAM when this thing shorts out. I mean, what the heck? Okay, installing the two 4 gig RAM modules. It had, I think it had four in it. So we'll put two fours in, giving it an eight, 8 gig total. Be nice. Max it out, because I was going to try to put Windows 10 on it, so 64 bit. All right, good. We got that. We got to get this into here and then it'll clip in. There's a little, where is that little thing? There's some kind of little thing that clips in here underneath the battery. And then there's two screws that come up from underneath. So I'll do that and we'll get the keyboard installed. Okay, there's two screws here and here that go down and hold the keyboard into place on the other side. So that's cool them in there. Good. The DVD drive. And he comes over here and there's a screw that holds him in. A Samsung 840 Evo 250 gig that I updated the firmware on and I'm gonna put that in the tray here instead of this 640 gig Seagate because it's probably a 5400 RPM and it's super slow. I'm going to swap that out, put this tray in here, and then plug it into this connector. And since we're being an idiot and putting this whole thing back together, uh, the hard drive's in. Let's just go ahead and put this cover on the bottom. Like it's not going to have to come apart here in a couple seconds because I forgot to put a wire on or pinch the cable when I put a screw in or something like that. But we can dream, right? This is the old battery. 78, 60 milliamp hour. I got a new one. It's an anchor. Um, 10,400. So 78, 60, 10,400. It looks like it'll fit. I mean, it's different, you know, it's gonna be bigger. It's gonna hold the machine up in the air and on a slight angle, but will it fit? Which way does it go in? This way. Cool. Power. Cross your fingers, man. Cross your fingers. Got everything back together. We got a new battery. Oh no, no bootable device. Insert boot, insert boot disk and press any key. Well, does anyone remember how to get into the BIOS of a HP? What is it, F10, F9, F2? 
I'm going to say F9. F10, F9, F9, F10. Hey, we got BIOS. Well, let's check this out anyway. <coughs> yeah, sure. Load setup defaults. Okay. Well, our time... Oh, it actually has a system date. So even when we pulled that battery, it must not have killed the, the CMOS. Uh, what do we got here? What I need to do is, there may be nothing on that hard drive. I need to go get a uh, bootable um, flash drive and see if I can install Windows 10 on this thing. Powered on, right? That's not to say that something's not connected right or you know the network card doesn't work or the sound doesn't work. That's why I was hoping I could just boot the thing up. But uh, yeah, let me play with it a little bit and I'll be back. So I actually got it to boot off a Windows 10 USB drive, no problem. Looks like it wants to install here. Oh, touchpad works. Activate Windows, it wants, a, this is Windows 10, it wants a product key. I have a product key on the bottom for Windows 7. I think it will take it now with this new revision of Windows 10 and install. Windows 10 installed successfully. I haven't really checked for any updates yet. It shows eight gig, 64-bit operating system, that's great. Um, I tried to hook up a Bluetooth mouse. <laughs> I don't think this has Bluetooth, so I need to check into that. There's a module that I didn't look, you know, maybe this one never had Bluetooth. Also, there's something going on with the sound. Although it is kind of working, it's real quiet, even though I have it turned up the whole way. And when I did the test, only one speaker worked. So we'll continue to play with some drivers here, but it installed, it installed the uh, operating system and most of the drivers are there. So maybe just tweak a few things here and report and uh, report back okay so yes it's back apart again um, partially everything works really great on it I installed Windows 10 I did updates everything was good but um, the one thing that doesn't work is the speakers these front speakers the the rear sub works which we connected here but these don't work and I noticed I know you can't see this from here, but this cable here is all hosed up. I mean, it looks like when they went, see this came as part of this base and when they went to pull it out of the connector here, I think they wedged something in there and it's all broken and it might, I guess it's shorted, I'm not sure. And if it is, it might have, it's either just shorted out that needs fixed or it's, you know, something with burned up with these speakers. Anyway, these are hooked together with a wire, so it might be more of a pain in the butt than I think, but I have the old base with a good wire on it and a good speaker set. So I'm gonna maybe pull this out and see what needs to be done here about replacing that. Also, I need to look, remember I said about the Bluetooth module and now I forget where it is, but somewhere in here I need to look to see if there's a Bluetooth module because I'm not getting any Bluetooth. Maybe this doesn't even have that module. And one more thing. Oh, there was a screw coming through and I need to see where it mates up because it wasn't threading correctly. But other than that, um, if I can get those things solved, mainly the speakers, um, this thing's gonna be great. A couple things I figured out. This is gonna be nice because this comes right out. This speaker over here, I took one screw out and, and the USB board comes out and then there's one screw underneath to take this whole speaker out. So uh, let me put this down. This is gonna come right out of here pretty nicely. As soon as I figure out how to get it off of this post. There we go. So I'll replace this double speaker assembly with one out of the old system and hopefully that'll fix it. Bluetooth. There's a plug over here right where the speaker plugs in. It says Bluetooth. There's nothing plugged into it. I assume this does not have a Bluetooth module and that's okay. I'm not worried about it at this point. And the screw I was concerned about that was tight was up here and it just looks like the, the metal uh, flash around it is getting in the way of the screw. So all problems explained. Now I just gotta replace this speaker set and see what happens, get it back together. Well, I'll tell you what, that goes a lot better the second time around. Went together a lot faster and I was much more comfortable doing it. All right, let's see what we got here. Hopefully it'll still boot up. Something else I found, uh, this thing has a fingerprint reader on it down here in the corner and I 
put my fingerprint in and um, the Windows 10 had drivers built in for it. Look, it's blinking. And watch, if I want to log in, I should be able to just scan my finger over it, knows who I am, logs me right in. Pretty cool. Now let's check out our sound. Still don't know if it's working. Well, before, I wasn't getting any sound out of the front speakers at all. It sounds louder. Let's go into the test. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming out of here. Over here. Nice. So it must have been something with that that wire, what did I do with it? Um, maybe I can show you. Can you? I don't know if you can see it, but it's all it's all messed up right here. Anyway, it's probably shorted out. Cool. All right, well, fun little project. Um, what do I have in it? You know, the base was $100. This this top piece, which had the plastic broken, that was 11 bucks. The new heat sink inside, which I didn't use, right? That was $8. The memory was 30. The battery was 40, maybe. So I don't know, less than $200, right around $200. But I'll tell you what, after I cleaned it up here and checked it out, other than not having Bluetooth, which is okay, yeah, it's a it's a five or six year old machine, but it's a 17 inch, it's in really good shape. So it'll probably become my, my one that I play around uh, with because all I had was a 15 inch similar to this and it was a year or two older. So not too bad. And it's pretty, pretty speedy too with the uh, SSD in it, you know? So I got eight gig of RAM, I got about 200 gig free on the SSD. Not bad. All right, guys. Maybe we learned something today here, or maybe we just did this for entertainment and to spend money. I don't know. Either way, thanks for watching. Hope there was something fun and informative here, and we'll catch you next time.